We turn now to abortion rights. We sat down yesterday with Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, and talked about why Democrats want to draw attention to this issue. Abortion's on the ballot in all 50 states. Abortion's on the ballot for every one of us, because if we Theoretically elect, speaking, you're saying. Well, if we elect a, a, a Donald Trump or a Nikki Haley or a Ron DeSantis, they all have pledged to sign a national abortion ban. And so in a state they like- They haven't signed, no, Donald Trump hasn't said what he's going to do. <laughs> he just said six weeks is, is too much for him. He's also the one out there taking credit for the Supreme Court ripping this right away with the Dobbs decision that overruled Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. So it is very clear that abortion is on this ballot for all of us. To pass a federal law, you would need to, to restore what was in Roe versus Wade. Democrats would need 60 Senate votes. They'd need to be able to get it through the House and they'd need the presidency. That math isn't there. So that claim that Democrats could secure the right, isn't that giving people false hope? I don't think so, because right now, one in three women in this country live in a state where they have no access to reproductive freedom to make their own decision. If they have a partial miscarriage at home or sepsis or they are at the reproductive health is at risk. They have no ability to get that that service. And so this is why I think if a Donald Trump is president or any of the people on the Republican side right now, unfortunately, is they are going to promote an abortion ban for all of us. Right now, this president has said he is absolutely going to fight for reproductive freedom. Even if he doesn't have a, a Congress that will send that bill to his desk, mm -hmm. Him being in the White House keeps a national ban from happening. You're saying if somehow Republicans were to sweep the Senate and sweep the House, Joe Biden would veto that bill. But yes. You, you actually think that that's a, a legitimate promise to make to voters because Joe Biden doesn't talk about abortion much. And in, in fact, he has said he's not big on it because of his faith. Does he need to talk about it more? I think it would be good if he did. I know that uh, one tenant of his belief system is that women and only women at, with their families and, and healthcare professionals are the ones who know what decision is right for them and that he is fighting and going to continue to fight to make sure that that is squarely the ability of, of an American woman to make that decision. You think he needs to be the messenger on that more? I don't think it would hurt. I think people want to know that this is a president that is fighting, and I think he has said that. Um, to use maybe more, more you know, blunt language, maybe that would be helpful. But he—that's his position. So here in Michigan, um, it is now protected under law access to abortion. Viability is decided by a healthcare professional who determines the likelihood of the fetus's survival outside the uterus. Practically speaking science is gonna improve. Viability is gonna move closer and closer to conception. This is one of those challenges. Is this an issue that just gets litigated again and again and again? I think I have come to the conclusion that a right that was there for my, almost my whole life, I'm 52, um, is now very much in jeopardy and that I'm gonna to have to continue to fight to protect this right. The Roe standard was a question about viability, did have, um, I think, real, made a lot of sense. And, and I think that's why you see people coming out in states all across America and saying, we're demanding this right, and that should be the standard. Well, Roe had viability, the presumption being that was roughly around 24 weeks. Mm -hmm. That is moving closer and closer to conception. So you're saying, even though you had this win in Michigan, it's not a closed matter. It, it's a continued fight. Absolutely. I, really, I mean, we made great strides here, but no one should feel complacent that this work is done. A national ban would upend everything that we've accomplished here, everything they accomplished in Ohio. When you or, say national ban, what do you mean? I, you look at the Speaker of the House right now has, has absolutely vowed that he supports a national ban, sending something to the president's desk that bans, whether it's He's after also six said the weeks. He's the votes aren't there for it. At, at this the moment. Math. Yeah. at this moment, but that can change. And that's why codifying this right, having someone in the White House who would veto it if we see legislation like that pass through the Congress is gonna be really important. Do you actually think there is a national consensus on abortion now? 
I think that the majority of people expect to have the right to make their own decisions about their body. The most important, profound economic decision a woman and her family will make over the course of their lifetime is whether and when to bear a child. There are a lot of economic issues that go alongside raising children. Do you think the Biden administration needs to campaign more on the issue of expanding access to, to more affordable child care? We want to make sure that Americans have the ability to raise children when they decide that they want to have a child, that it's easier for them to find child care that is affordable, that is high quality. We want to make sure that when they enroll their children in schools, that they're getting the kinds of supports they need to be successful. So how do you make up for the challenge that we're seeing? And we're seeing it in our polling because women think access to reproductive care is getting harder, not easier. And more than half of those polled by CBS say it's becoming more dangerous. How do you make up for those healthcare deserts in parts of the country? Well, it, the worst thing you can do is cut off access to to medical uh, ability to, whether it's ab around abortion or obtain contraception, cut off access to women being able to get health care on, you know, through telehealth, for instance. Are you satisfied with the Biden administration's messaging on these specific matters related to women? You know, I know that this administration is doing the work and they roll up their sleeves and I appreciate that they've been phenomenal partners to us here. I think all Democrats and all people who are are on the right side of this issue need to use their voices, need to be very clear to the American public. There's so much noise out there. There are so many stressors that people mm -hmm. are confronting that it's hard to, to cut through sometimes. And it's no fault of anyone. We've got to be very clear about how high the stakes are and what our priorities are. Because our polling is showing that the president is underperforming with the Democratic base. This is black voters, this is Hispanic voters. Is the issue of abortion access enough of a halo effect to make up for that lack of enthusiasm and the frustration? I'm not dismissing polls. I think that they are an important piece of data that should inform additional outreach. But I'm also not, I'm not getting, you know, I'm not freaking out. What I hear from people is a sense of urgency, mm -hmm. a sense of how serious this moment is in this country. And I, I respect that and know that's why we got to continue to show up and continue to talk about these fundamental issues that Americans and American families need solved. Are you concerned here in Michigan about think, the state staying blue? And I think everyone should always focus on Michigan. It's always going to be close in this state. You cannot make any assumptions about what the next election is going to bring based on the last one in a state like this. You got to show up, you got to do the work and show people that you really care about them. It's still a purple state. Absolutely. And Michigan is still up for play. Absolutely. Oh, I think it always will be. I want to talk a little bit about the economy. Um, our polling, by a 49 to 21 margin, um, voters believe former President Trump will be better for their finances than President Biden. So why do you think this perception exists? How do you fix it? We're seeing unemployment at historic lows. We're seeing take-home pay going up. I think that we have seen a lot of progress happen, inflation coming down. These are important factors that take time for people to really see the benefit from. Cost of living is still high. Cost of living is still high. And for a young person to buy a home that is out of reach for more people than it, than it has been in a long time. And so I think that all the work around affordable housing, the story that this president is gonna be able to tell as people start to tune in closer as we get closer to the election, it's going to be powerful. So this state in particular, it's Michigan. It's an auto state. The future of the industry um, and electric vehicles in particular, which President Biden has placed a very big bet on, is very dependent on the outcome of this next election and the federal subsidies to make that transition to electric vehicles. Are you um, disappointed that the auto workers union, the UAW, has not endorsed President Biden yet? You know, I think that they will endorse the president, but I also think it's a good thing that it's not just a foregone conclusion that that happens. You gotta earn the support of people, whether it's voters or a union or a, you know, a business executive, you've gotta earn individual support. And I think that their process will make sense and I'm confident the president will be 
will be the person that they end up supporting. This could be, as you said, another close election. So I have to ask you, since there are roughly what, 300,000 people in this state who identify as Arab American, you have a large Muslim American population. There is a lot of pain and frustration with the president's support of Israel um, and its military campaign. Mm -hmm. How will he be received by this community when he comes to visit this month? Well, no community is monolithic. I'll start with that. I will say that one of the great things about this state is this is where people came to from around the world for a good paying job and a high quality of life. It's true today, but it's why we have such a robust and beautiful Arab community in Michigan and a robust Jewish community in Michigan. These two communities have lived as neighbors in harmony for decades. And what's happening in Israel and Gaza has certainly, um, I think, caused pain for everyone. As we spoke to one of your constituents last night who said he went door to door for Joe Biden in 2020, but he's lost his vote in 2024, and he said he plans to protest against him. Mm -hmm. Is President Biden going to face protesters when he comes here because of this one issue? He may. A lot of voters are gonna vote for things like individual freedoms, like the basis of our democracy, uh, climate change. So there are a lot of things that are gonna come into play as we get closer and closer to the election, but certainly these are legitimate and raw feelings that, that people have and um, they're entitled to their opinions. Our full conversation with Governor Whitmer is on our YouTube channel.